Welcome back to Super Meat Boy on Instant Replay Live. Joe has done a few practice rounds, nothing too crazy, but he thinks he can uh, he thinks he can lick this on camera. So we're gonna give him a try, and we'll laugh and make fun of him horribly if he can't in ten minutes. <laughs> now, there's <laughs> great start, Joe. So I mean, the, this is one of those weird things, and a lot of people have harped on it uh, because it's one of the weird standout bad parts of Super Meat Boy. Mm -hmm. And it's because so much of the learning in this game is intuitive. It's in the process of... Yeah, but you have to play this. Right. Um, to be able to beat it, you have to die many, many, many times. Which, I mean, I mean, really, that stands for the whole game for you. Oof. <laughs> you were close on that one. He can kill you by slamming his head down on you, right? That's mm -hmm. not in the background or something? Okay. Yeah. He's a cool-looking boss, though. Yes. For sure. I like the animation. Sort of yeah. But but yeah, I know what you mean by just having to play the same character oh, over and over to down. figure out the pattern. I guess I'm just not a fan of pattern bosses anyway. No, absolutely not. Because why doesn't he learn maybe I shouldn't ever slam my head down? Like if he just keeps smashing at you forever, he'd be fine. But instead he uses his head and hurts himself. And he, uh, he clearly he is not a very intelligent boss. Right. But maybe he shouldn't be a complete moron. <laughs> so, I mean, he has some interesting tells for some of the things he does, but they obviously play that to their advantages. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's, that's, I think, the thing I would commit a cock. Commit a cock. Commit a Commit a cock. It's good. It's good. Because they, they, they play with the tells uh, later on in the fight when he looks like he's going to do something and he doesn't. But. It, it makes me sad because that's good. Mm. Having um, a telegraphed move is is good gameplay. It's like yeah. okay, he's doing this, and you know when a boss has different moves and you have to learn their telegraphs, that's cool. Um, but this guy is just by the numbers. Simon says. Mm hmm. Yeah. So a few episodes ago, we talked. We started to mention the 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 ghosts thing. Oh yeah. And I think that's always a fun conversation to mine. I think, first of all, first and foremost, I don't believe in ghosts. Oh, you don't? And yet... No. <laughs> and, but and yet, I've had some weird experiences that I can't explain, and it always, like, leaves me that, like, that slight bit of doubt that maybe there could be something beyond, you know, the, the, the realm we can understand. Um, and, and there's... There's not really a lot to these stories, I would say. I actually told them recently on the um, Molds Episode 2 podcast. I think I've mentioned them before, name-dropped them on the on here. But uh, we were in Clifton Forge, Virginia, um, for a local convention there that is super amazing, called Con of the Mountain. And uh, I got to hang out with the Molds guys. They run a Christian podcast. I'm also not particularly Christian at this point in my life, but... Um, they're they're just super cool guys, and they wanted to do an episode from within a supposedly haunted location. That was the idea. Um, my good friend and mentor Jack um, was running this con and grew up in Clifton Forge, Virginia, where there is a haunted theater, and um, or well, what he calls a haunted theater, and he claims to have had some really just outrageous supernatural experiences there, things that don't make any sense. Um, so we did an episode and we all told ghost stories there, and it was pretty good. Um, it, it's just fun. Like, that area, being at, like, midnight in a supposedly haunted and currently, um, quote-unquote abandoned... It's not really abandoned, because they're doing repairs to fix it up, and then they're going to reopen it, but it's a closed and, and in bad disrepair building. Like, it's real easy to get the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, my my best experience is here in Richmond, there's an island called Belle Isle. And my buddy and I stupidly um, decided that it would be a fun idea to cross over to Belle Island at night, even though that's illegal. There's, oh, wow. um, there's like always a cop car parked there. Um, but we decided that there's either no cop in it or he's just not paying attention. And so we went ahead and crossed the footbridge over. And um, this is my first year in college, so I was young and dumb and, you know, just 
things I would never do at this point in my life, I was willing to do then, obviously. Um, plus, this guy, he's as big as I am, and I'm a big guy. I'm like 6'2 and some change. Um, so we had decided we were invincible. <laughs> you know, like, no one's going to mess with us walking around Richmond at 3 a.m. Stupid idea as well. But we're over on this pitch black island because there's no lights it's not meant to be accessed at night it's like a park during the day but um we're walking around and richmond is full of history and that island is no exception there are little historic plaques you know markers that tell you like on this day or not on this day because that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> uh, at this site in this year this happened here you know right. and there's a lot of civil war history like that um so we, we read the first plaque by the light of his cigarette lighter. Um, my buddy's cigarette lighter. Mm. Buddy, I'll call him Thor for the purposes of this, uh, because that was his nickname back then. Um, he, uh, you summoned a demon by reading these plaques, right? Well, no. The first plaque tells us, like, this island was used by Native Americans in such and such time period as a hunting ground. They would literally, like, canoe over the river come to the island, hunt deer, and then take their kill back mm -hmm. over the river. Super cool, like, right? That's neat. Um, we were hoping, we started making jokes at that point that it might be like an Indian burial ground, but it wasn't. That wasn't what it was for. So then we get to another plaque, and it's like, during the Civil War, um, or maybe, I'm sorry, maybe it wasn't Civil War, maybe it was World War I, um, but there was um, a iron fountain, iron... Huh. Iron quarry, I guess maybe would be the word, on the island where they would pull iron up out of the earth and then they would cart it back over to the foundry across the river, Tredegar Ironworks, and they would make all kinds of iron weapons there. Yeah. Um, which is pretty neat. So it's like, oh man, this place has so much history. Then we go to cross um, into the path that goes through the woods because we thought, you know, we'll take a walk through the woods in the middle of the night idiots um but uh we stepped over this log and immediately both of us stopped dead in our tracks we like like have this just hard stop it doesn't make any sense why both of us would do it like you would think if one person was going to do that the other one would like take an extra step and then stop and be like hey what are you yeah. doing but we both stick there and we describe to each other this bizarre feeling that our feet just don't want to move. Like, like there's lead weights in our shoes and a cold going through our body and we're completely stunned, like, as to why that's happening. But we're still stupid and young and so we start doing this showboating thing where he's like, well, I won't, I won't call you a pussy if you want to go forward. <laughs> and I was like, our if you don't want to go, if you want to turn back, I won't, you know, I won't make fun of you. And I start giving him the same thing. Well, I won't, tell, you know, I won't insult you, you know? <laughs> like, and uh, I don't remember who went back first. I think it might have been him. But we finally, you know, we finally give up on pursuing this path for whatever's making us feel this way. And, and the fact that both of us feel this way. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's like, yeah, what the heck is going on? So we, uh, we back up. And there is a plaque nearby. Um, and we read it. And it says that this area was used in the uh, in the Civil War as a POW camp for soldiers from the north. They would, The Confederate soldiers would keep people here. And they, they describe the conditions. And it was just horrible. They basically dug a trench, put people outside. Oh, you did it! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Um, they dug the trench, put people outside, pointed guns at them, mm -hmm. and kept them there for months. Through winter, people died of starvation and frostbite. Mm -hmm. And then it says, marked by four posts, which are laid out in a square on the ground just behind you, is the site where the mass grave of bodies was placed. Um, most of the bodies have been exhumed, and it gave like some number in the thousands. Um, however... Uh, actually, really fitting animation for me talking about bodies being exhumed. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Oh, he's alive. Oh. Son of a... You cursed him. 
Really, man? Okay, anyhow. Thousands of bodies exhumed. However, it is believed that some are still buried there that could not be removed. Wow. And that's the the log, quote-unquote, that we stepped over was actually a post that was supposed to mark off the mass grave spot. Gosh. And we had no idea. So, that is my best ghost story. Um, hopefully that's probably an episode. We didn't know how long that boss battle would take. I think it was around ten minutes, actually. I don't know if it was under or over, but... Yeah, I'm a little worried that it's under, so... Maybe we just ramble a little bit. Do you have any ghost I do stories? Have, so, I don't have a ghost story, but I told you briefly about... You <laughs> keep hitting the wrong Shut button. Shut up! Shut up! No, uh, I do have a... I, so, I was recently living in Tennessee, and living in a, a little, like, riggy dink place. Um, there was a whiteboard on the wall in my room that was there. I was like, oh, I need a whiteboard. But uh, somebody wanted to borrow it a couple weeks after I was living there, and they took it off the wall... And on the wall, behind the whiteboard, were two black handprints. Yeah. I don't mean, like, someone was painting and put their, like, painted handprints on the wall. It was, like, like, Like Skyrim, in, like, Assassin, we know. <laughs> yeah, like, it was like, what is that? I think you told this already, though. Not on, not on, I told you on, in person, okay, not all on right. the It's show. hard to remember. See, this is why we yeah. need to not talk to each other when we're not recording the <laughs> we show. Need just, we need to just, like... <laughs> just silence, a vow of silence so at the end of time. Shit. Uh, All right. What's going on here? We'll give you one try, and then we'll uh, we'll call one the episode. Try. Yeah, you got to do this one level on one try. Okay. The, the heat is okay. on. Uh, shit. <laughs> 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 this looks hard. Yeah, it does. Oh my god. Oh wow. Okay. That looks um, real hard though, and it just shit. gets harder the more you go up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I gotta. Okay, I gotta even like figure out. I what can't imagine is going on making here. it through that. Is it right there? Is that what I have to do? And then I have to race it? I think so. Oh All Jesus! Right. So turn this way. Oh, I gotta like just. You're gonna have to go. Oh, it's I can going go over up. It. Yeah, but then... I gotta not hit the other one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hit the corner Joe. of the wall. Whoa. That was like not even close. All right. Next time on Instant Replay Live, hopefully this was long enough for an episode, and uh, let us know some of your meaty ghost stories, uh, meaty? if you have any. Yeah, tell us if you believe, if you don't believe, if you've had experiences, because I always, as much as I am a skeptic and I don't actually even feel like, even with my best experiences, I don't feel like they were real. I think they have other explanations, including just, you know, right. the, the, the fear of being in that area, the adrenaline. I am always interested in ghost stories. It's something I find just to be a remarkable phenomenon. So I, I'd love to hear them. I, I tell you what, we could have a full conversation on just the nature of the universe and like if, if ghosts souls, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Do I believe in souls? That's the that's the hard question for me because mm. I love the idea of souls, but I almost have this hard scientific view of the universe, and mm -hmm. I don't know where I can fit that that romantic concept in. Also, you're white. Also, I'm white, so. Uh, but I'm not ginger. I thought you would go against me. You should have gone against me so I mean, that we could have some disparity and not be completely racist. Um, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> goodbye. Bow wow. You really kick it. Kick Yo, it. plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.